Welcome folks. Um, this is another installment of the uh, hockey skate figure skate uh, sharpening. Uh, call this episode the actual way that I do it in my uh, my little workshop here. Uh, what you see before you, I've got this skate mounted on a little piece of angle iron. I'll get into more detail of that as we go along. Uh, and I'm going to show you basically without the drill press. This is the actual grindstone that I use. It's a bit on the coarse side. If I ever find one with a finer grid, I'll probably buy it if it's cheap enough. Um, this one is, like I say in the previous video, I had mentioned about the radius and that in the, uh, the skate blade it's actually got a, a hollow ground with two points on it. That's the, this is the surface that is contact with the ice here. And so what we're trying to do is uh, grind a radius in the blade. I'm going to show you uh, basically as we go along, uh, before we actually start any machines, which we won't be doing in this video, but if you ever do get along to uh, as far as uh, doing your own skate sharpening or working in a skate shop, make sure you wear some eye protection, some safety glasses. Uh, if it's noisy, put some ear protection on. And whenever you're working around moving machinery, uh, don't wear gloves unless you're talking about welding or something like that. Um, if you get a, a glove, if it's acceptable to wear a glove with uh, powered machinery, then by all means, if it, but it's all based on safety. You don't want to get gloves caught in any, any moving machinery don't want to see anybody hurt so safety considerations considered keep yourself safe that's the way I want to see it and we'll continue now uh, what I have here is I was explaining before in a previous video how I, uh, I made a fixture to hold the skate to sharpen it I use a drill press to do the actual grinding spinning of the grindstone that's here basically there's a, a hexagonal side on there there used to be a, a step down with a quarter inch diameter to put in a, a hand electric drill but I've cut that off and found that mounting it in my big uh, half inch chuck on my drill press that would really drive it really well, no slipping, no jumping out or anything. Um, as far as the fixture is concerned, I just looked around at any scraps that I had kicking around and what I found was a piece of angle iron. It's 90 degrees from here to here. It's uh, approximately a quarter of an inch in thickness and it's about uh, oh seven inches long thereabouts. And uh, what you see here is I've uh, drilled a hole and then filed it for a custom fit. And what there is here is a C-clamp. And if you look through there, it feeds through the skate opening here. Same thing with the figure skates. It goes in between the boot and the blade. And it straddles the blade. And I modified this on certain skates. It gets too close to the grindstone. So this is just a, basically a cheap uh, C-clamp and I've modified the clamping surface on the upper half and uh, I've taken, this used to be round I'll try to get some light on it for you um, it used to be round so I filed some flats on either side to give clearance in case it came too close to where I was grinding on the uh, sharp part of the blade so it just feeds right through if the video will show what that is, it feeds right through the skate and then it just uh, clamps down on the uh, on the surface, I've measured all these surfaces and made sure everything was square and I, uh, I made sure that the the blade was actually parallel with the, the this is the actual surface that it sits on down here when it's in the drill press and this is what it glides on on the drill press table here and then the grindstone, I'll just show you here quickly I'll give you both views this, um, from the side and as well as top but this is spinning in the, um, the drill press here let's see if I can get that to stabilize for me so anyways this is spinning well over a thousand rpm and it's got to be on center of the blade. The radius on the grinding wheel has to be exactly exactly in the middle. Otherwise, you're going to have one edge that's low and one edge is high. So you've got to make this adjustment here and lock it in on the drill press. This is fixed. The table's uh, clamped into position. And uh, to keep the, uh, they call it the quill or the spindle. Keep that as short as possible to keep the vibration down. More rigidity is better. And uh, so that once the table height is fixed, then I'll keep, like I say, the spindle as short as possible for rigidity and then I'll center that up and what I do is I use a felt pen okay and I, you could say paint that whole trough all the way along inside the skate plate and you wonder why I'm doing that it's, uh, it's actually a telltale so say if I hadn't had already had this uh, set up and I had to adjust for center like I'll do it with light I'll shine a light from the back and, you know, shine a flashlight from the back and then 
get the best I can visually and then I'll do a light pass on the machine and see um, just how much of the felt pen line is being taken off. If the felt pen line is, le is being taken off um, one side but leaving the black felt pen off towards the other side then I know I have to make a further adjustment and what you see on this grinding wheel you can actually see the felt pen that's on there. That's actually the felt pen that's rubbed off of the skate as I was um, as I was doing it and or I could have been using that as well for checking the true after I uh, I dress the wheel. Sometimes another thing I'll do is I'll, I'll just steady my hand up with a felt pen and, and just touch down to see if there's any spots where it isn't uh, where it isn't making contact. I know I have to dress it down a bit further and it's not running true. So there's two reasons why you'll see that on there. Um, so that's what I do basically is uh, make sure that the uh, the fixture or the angle iron there is, is um, letting a little bit of blade. You don't want a lot hanging out, as little as possible actually. And what I had to be careful because this is just sort of like a, you know, the redneck way of doing it, if you want to call it that. Simple and cheap. Uh, make sure that when I clamp this, it's directly over the angle iron. Otherwise, you'll put a pressure that's too far this way or too far that way. So it's got to be perfectly in alignment with this um, this angle iron upright here. So there's the clamping mechanism. And this uh, I was mentioning about bent blades, and this is how I discovered how bent blades are. Um, I'll, I'll check this blade with a straight edge before I even clamp it in there and there's really no no blade that's that perfect they'll have a bit of an arc in them okay so what I do is when I put it in here is I won't put it so the blade is arced up otherwise then it'll just pivot on this point and the skate when you sharpen it the edges won't be um, straight all along you'll have a, a low edge high edge low edge kind of thing and opposite for the other sharp edge on the skate blade. So what I do is when I mount it in this fixture here, this angle iron, is I always make sure I find out where the bow and the blade is and I mount it this way. So that when I do clamp down the middle, it's taking the high point, squishing it down, and it actually gives me a little extra friction and it keeps the blade, it straightens the blade as I clamp it. And a, a similar thing will probably happen with the industrial uh, professional models you see that they're using it's a fairly long clamping fixture and it will to a certain extent straighten that blade as it's being ground because if it doesn't you're going to have a high edge low edge thing so high low high and on the other side will be the opposite so you got to make sure that the blade is perfectly straight when it's being clamped in the fixture when you're going to grind it okay so that's basically it um, another thing that I do because it's got this handle here is uh, once I tighten it up I put a piece of tape on here so that with the vibration of the grinding it doesn't take this handle into the machine as it's spinning like into the, uh, the spindle area and it might, might even bump it and cause uh, loose contact with the grindstone on the blade so I always tape this back to make sure it's not going to feed in anywhere near the machine keep it back. So basically what you have here, see there's the H3 and what the H is is just tells me that it's hockey if it's already in the machine then I know it's centered up unless I have to dress the grindstone again that is but um, I know that it's set for the right height for a hockey blade so basically you just turn the machine on, safety glasses keep long hair and long clothing, don't wear necklaces, rings or anything when you're, you're moving machinery it grabs as you lose a finger, it's not a nice thing so anyways turn on the machine, my safety glasses are on okay so well over a thousand RPM and uh, this is spinning. I put a couple arrows on there to show you the direction that it's spinning clockwise from the top. You're actually looking down onto my workbench, so I find this is a good way to, to video. Keeps the camera out of the way and keeps it stable. So that's spinning. Always go from front to back if I can. Uh, it depends, like I say, if, if the blade is bent the other way, um, the, the, the boot might be this way and I might be sharpening it in the other direction, but I always, as a rule, go from this direction touch down just get it sparking and then follow the contour of the blade and bring it along. My hands are actually underneath here holding the angle iron down onto the table but for the video purposes I'm going to keep them up top here just for stability and to make the video a bit better. So start at the front got that thing spinning and the sparks are flying and a medium pressure kind of a thing. You don't lean in it too, too hard you just got to make sure that it makes contact and then after I take a look look at those felt pen marks make sure everything's good and I'll show you how I check for square um, 
before I do the finish few passes on this but when it comes down to, to actually grinding there's, a, there's the roughing stage where you're just basically trying to clean the blade up and if the nicks aren't too deep or whatever uh, you can get them out of there and make sure it's making a full grind on the full hollow of the blade not just partial otherwise you'll have a bunch of sharp bits on your blade and some dull ones too so I'm always inspecting visually okay so on the finish passes a lighter pressure and maybe you know just check the finish on the blade if you go too fast you'll get uh, a, a rough finish and possibly chatter marks and if you go too slow you can also get a bit of chatter see this wheel here is only about three inches in diameter the ones on professional machines they could be six or eight inches in diameter which is that much better but it depends the speed you run it at the smaller diameter the wheel you you run them at a faster rpm or revolutions per minute a bigger wheel you slow it down a bit so you you have to have the right speed for the size of grinding wheel and the design so on the finish few passes I'll go at least a half a dozen passes probably on a finish and slow it down a bit nice light pressure pushing into the wheel and keep a constant speed as you go along and you just find the speed that works best and you examine the finish on there look for chatter marks um, I try to get it as nice nice looking as possible and a smooth flow no ripples um, it took a bit to get used to it like when you first start doing this if you haven't done it you're gonna have to be uh, really careful that you don't start letting the thing jump around or anything otherwise then it'll take an edge off your blade while you grind it and then you have to remove a lot of material to get it back to where it should be so that's the basics of actual grinding like I say this is spinning this wheel is spinning well over a thousand rpm now I adjust the speed according to the wear of the uh, the grindstone itself if it's wearing unusually fast I'll speed it up a little bit they have a they have a a tendency to if you run them too slow they the grit actually wears down really quick quick and if you run them too fast they don't grind properly and but they do last longer so you have to find that magic speed for the given uh, diameter and composition of that grindstone so that's basically it Just touch down take it along keep it as smooth and as the same speed as possible like don't slow down speed up keep it a constant speed monitor what you're doing visually and then uh, shut the machine off and everything when you're you're not going to be grinding you don't want to be uh, grabbing or running into it with your fingers or anything so there's that part of it um, now what we can do now is I'll just move some of this stuff aside here and uh, let's see what to do before okay I'm just gonna set this up here just bear with me for a minute and we'll see what do we do here something like there we go. Something like so. I just have to get this. It's not much to clamp onto with this fixture I have here. I'm just going to try to try to lock it in place so I can give you a an actual close up of um, of what we're doing here. It's not being uh, very cooperative. Anyways, there we go. It's going to do the work for us now. Okay, so here we go now. Let's center that up. Okay, as you can see, here's the uh, there's the boot. It's it's facing you straight on. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I uh, check this thing for square. The visual part was with the felt pen line down into the trough here, and watch what the the grindstone actually does. And uh, so, what I have, I'll show you the actual tools first of what I actually use when I check this, and then I'll enlarge it with my uh, magic little template gadget so you can see it a little easier on the video we're like we're saying we're on the front of the boot here push it back so center it up for you okay so here's the actual tools I use to check for square now what I do is I take the straight edge here hold it at the halfway mark in this case it's a, a 12 inch ruler I hold it at, at the 6 inch mark to give it a balance otherwise you hold it here it's all over the place so get a good balance on it and then I push it up against the, the two sharp edges on the blade uh, remember there's two edges on the blade right so basically what I'm doing is, is contacting those two points there with the uh, the scale but the, actually on the skate and then I have this piece of uh, referred to as key steel or square sock this one is uh, not really square it's 3 8 thick by a half inch uh, wide this way oh it's a little over two inches long and I've cleaned it up with a honing stone and taken any of the burrs off it so it would be true and checked it with a square 
make sure everything's square and then I put this up beside the blade here and like I say when I have the, the scale on the two points of the uh, sharp edges of the blade after it's sharpened. You can even check it. Uh, someone that's sharpened skates for you this way. Or you could get a little square if you get one that fits in there without banging into the um, the blade holder itself. But get this to touch down on both contacts and then I'd go up there and then I shine a light from the back and then make sure that when it comes up it's parallel because if it's cocked this way or that way then you know you've got a high edge or a low edge depending on which way it's leaning. And so then it'll adjust the height of the grindstone up or down until I get that trough and get those two sharp edges of the blade equal. All the way down you have to measure in several points. Now um, I'll enlarge this for you. And I'll get this here. There's my template from the last video. Or one of the last videos. And I've got a, a few things here to to enlarge it to show you what I'm actually doing. Okay, so what I've done is marked up a piece of uh, two by two. It's actually inch and a half um, inch square. And uh, you can see the lines I put on. This is 90 degrees in theory. This is just so I'm making it bigger for you to show you on the video. Um, so you can understand it a bit better. Uh, like I say, this would be the, the steel scale. I'd put it up against the two um, high points of the blade on the edges there. And then I bring this up. This is representing the blade here. So I bring this up. This is this little piece of square um, representing the piece of uh, key stock or key steel that I was just showing you. Put it up so it's touching the blade all the way along. And then uh, put this on to the two high points and then slide this up and look at the light that's in there. If you see light that's this way or this way then you know you've got a higher low edge. And like I say I do it in several points up and down the blade. Um, I might not be doing it in this position where it's pointing upwards. It'll usually be um, laying on its side on the fixture and uh, you just basically make sure that it's safe and not going to fall and then you, you, at least I do, and uh, take these measurements and I could actually check someone who at a skate shop who sharpened. You know, he might claim to be an expert but uh, using this method here it doesn't lie and uh, to confirm what you've got there you can do the same thing on the other side make sure that your square part is there and then you do the same thing for the other side and several points down the blade so you'll find the high and low spots on your blade uh, if, if you're really into competitive skating say figure skating uh, you want the the best sharpening possible and I, if I was uh, say I was inspecting a, a pro level uh, figure skaters blades I'd be using a method much much like this because it doesn't lie to you um, anybody could tell you anything they want but uh, when it comes down to parts and pieces when you inspect something that'll uh, that'll show you where the truth lies so my little rant there what can I say okay on to um, what I do for the uh, the dressing of the grindstones now Okay, I can use this to maybe steady up my hand a little bit. And I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so in order to get this radius for the um, for the hockey skate, we'll use that for a size beginning. Uh, where are we now? Okay, in the previous video I was showing you that, um, that it was a 3 8 radius. Now, on this grindstone you'll see H3. And what that tells me, I could I could put three eighths on there, but I just put three because I know what it is. It's the number of eighths of an inch that the radius actually measures. So we're um, we're duplicating this radius on this washer. It's a three quarter inch diameter washer, and half of that is the radius. That's three eighths of an inch. So here's the scale. You measure halfway across, and I get three eighths. Each of those uh, lines on the top of your video on the scale are eighths of an inch one inch divided into eight equal parts so that tells me that's what the size is now geez how do I uh, go about um, doing that well I started out with a few different things but the best thing I came up with some some of the old timers call the stuff haywire it's just a soft easily bendable wire and I found by using a round wire when you shine the light in behind there you can actually see it but then you know when I show you this you can see this. Hey, geez, that doesn't fit. This guy must be blind. Uh, not at all. It was a refinement I made. Uh, I actually dressed back 
the outer two-thirds of the stone at a greater radius so that when I do the finished dressing on the part that actually it's only about an eighth of an inch wide that actually makes contact when I sharpen the blade and for faster dressing and better so it doesn't bounce when I dress it the only part that actually conforms to this radius see what this radius is is I bent it around uh, a piece of round stock same diameter as this onto here and pulled the wire as I bent it around and I made a little handle on it and uh, I left this uh, this part here long as I pulled with pliers around the uh, it was a piece of shafting I used three quarter inch diameter shafting and pulled it and then once uh, once I got the radius to conform to the shafting and then I used this similar to this washer here and made sure and I shine a light back there and get it really as close as I can this is like I say the redneck style and it works really well for me I don't have a professional machine with the, the grinding uh, or the grinding wheel dressing attachment probably has an industrial diamond on it too which I don't have and then like I say with this long end here as I was pulling it to make this radius nice then I would just cut it off at the appropriate length that would suit me that's where I ended up cutting it off so what I do is uh, in order to dress this thing you see I have to make sure that that conforms with the part where it's touching down so that radius is actually only only uh, conforming to my gauge on the center section here only about a oh, quarter of an inch um, quarter of an inch of that stone the rest is dressed back so that I don't have to um, worry about t spending extra time grinding or dressing the whole wheel and all I've really used is this old grinding wheel I've had here it's sacrificial you can see from all the, the different dressings I've done it's eaten away at it so this is basically spinning in the machine like so and I'll get this steady my hand make sure I'm not, not going to get any clothing or my my flesh ground and I just keep nice just keep going and wherever I need to go if I need a flat spot of this mind you you wear um, also don't forget to wear a dust mask because this stuff especially when you're dressing it makes a heck of a dust cloud with grinding grit you don't want that in your lungs so I'll just basically work that back and forth and if I if I want a radius part this has already got a radius ground in it from previous dressings and I just keep working that until I get it as good as I can and then uh, shine a light from behind get my trusty gauge that I made up and I put it on there like so and then I'll shine a light from the back or a white piece of paper and look in there and, and once I've got that center quarter inch area exactly conforming to my gauge then I'm ready to start grinding the skate then I'll I'll have to still put the felt pen uh, paint the center of the trough of the, the blade where it touches down on the ice uh, with the felt pen again a few um, a few passes there to make sure I'm on center. Once I know I'm on center then I can start grinding again as I showed you earlier in the video with this thing spinning in the drill press. That's the one for the H3. That's a 3 8 uh, radius grind for the hockey skates. That's one works for me. I've actually skated with this, ground my own blades on the skates and that's the magic number that works for me. And from the feedback I got from figure skaters Again, here we go. I made up a, a similar wire gauge here, and there's the 5 8 radius. That's inch and a quarter diameter, or 5 8 radius. This was made the same way. I pulled the wire around a piece of shafting, and then once I got it nice and true and round, and then I just cut off the excess there and made a little handle with some needle and those pliers there, so I could hold on to it and hold it up against the grindstone, so I could check what I was doing when I was dressing the wheel. Now. Um, the, uh, the grindstone for that, I've actually found one I had kicking around the, the old workshop here. It was a finer grit, and if, if you notice, it's a smaller, much smaller um, stone than the hockey skate. And on here, I've got uh, F5. That tells me that it's um, for figure skates. The F stands for figure skater, figure, and the H stands for hockey. So right away, I can tell what the machine was set up for, my drill press for center. If I just put, uh, say, a 3 or any number without the F or the H, then I wouldn't have it adjusted to the right height. The figure skate being the thicker blade, and depending on how you dress the stone, also the stone is uh, it's not going to clamp in the same, same area, so they each have to be adjusted um, according to the blade that you're sharpening. The figure skate blade is much uh, thicker. That will change the height, and plus the different grindstone that's in there. So. If I just leave them in the, if I'm not using the drill press for drilling or anything, I'll just leave the last uh, stone I, I ground uh, skates with 
So if I come up to my drill press and I need to sharpen hockey skates and I see my uh, F5 uh, grindstone sitting in there, I'll say, whoa, oh, I better change that. I sure don't want that grind in my hockey skates. Or I'll be falling and not being able to stop. So there's the difference. This one's a bit coarse. I got it cheap at a, a liquidation store, like a buck and a half kind of thing, you know. And this one was just laying around the shop looking for a, a home. So uh, I found with the this grit works really well with the figure skate. Like I say, these are pretty small diameter. And uh, also another thing that works good for this figure skates uh, is, is with the smaller diameter up near the toe pick here. Um, if you use a big diameter wheel like the ones they use in the skate shop, you really got to be careful you don't start grinding off this lower part of the pick. Um, this is where a small diameter wheel actually comes in handy because I can start the grind in there without having to worry about hitting that uh, bottom pick on the skate, on the figure skate here. Uh, a little trickier to use a smaller diameter um, grindstone because it can ripple and if you don't keep a constant speed you really got to watch it. It might dig in and, and you know actually ruin the blade if you're uh, you know on top of things as you're doing them but uh, I've had years of uh, experience working on industrial machines and stuff so it's not a problem for me. That's why I come up with these uh, oh cheap as possible methods you might say. Uh, that's the way I work things. Uh, I'm not a millionaire I just sort of do some head scratching and I guess it was a gift I had when I was born. I was able to figure things out. Uh, well, it started with a lot of help in the beginning but then uh, as I gained some skills and whatnot then I had started to figure out things on my own. As you can tell by these videos, they're uh, they're low budget to say the least. There's no no fancy editing or anything. Another thing to do uh, to also remember is whenever you're going near a skate blade, always use like a, a doubled over um, paper towel or a thick rag. Really watch yourself. I don't want you to see you getting cut with anything. So never let your flesh touch these. Okay. So always wipe them down when you're going to wipe them down. Also when you're skating, uh, they're all wet from after skating at the rink. Always dry your blades and your boots too if you can, but always take a rag or something with you in your skate bag or even a you know a shopping plastic shopping bag from the supermarket. When you're finished with any blade always wipe them dry but always use a thick rag or, or whatever and make sure your flesh doesn't touch any skate blade especially when you're uh, you know when you're uh, going in this direction you will cut yourself really badly if it's freshly sharpened especially. Another thing while I've, uh, I'm thinking about it it's going to be a long video as you can tell but might as well get it all done in one that way you don't be searching all over the place. So on here there's another thing you can check um, when you uh, get your, your skate sharpened or whatever. Also you'll see another thing that I forgot to mention is uh, I'll mention it now is, is after you've ground the skates you've got to use a honing stone. If you just grind the blades what happens is as it's being ground here as it's being ground there, where's my pointer? Um, the pressure from the, the blade and also if they haven't uh, dressed the grindstone in a while um, the pressure and everything will put a, what they call a burr out. It will actually push the metal out to the side. I'll use this to simulate it. It will actually push metal out to the side here on both sides, both on that side and over here. And you can actually feel that. This is where, folks, I want you to be really careful. Um, what you do after you've someone's ground your skates, if they haven't honed the sides of them, I'll show you that in a second, the way to test for that is be very careful. Uh, if you are uh, got really dainty hands, uh, try to find some guy that's got a few calluses maybe, but still has some feeling in his finger. What I do to see if, uh, especially if someone else is sharpening your skates, is you make sure you never touch these points here, but what you do is you get around here and you go here with your fingers and just lightly and then you pull down. And if you feel anything upset, an upset edge on the outside here, you know you've got a burr that's pushing outwards. That's not good. It won't give you a sharp edge to skate on. Um, now I'll explain how you can take care of that either from someone else's grinding or in the case of my own grinding. Once I've finished ground and I've inspected the skate, um, then I'll, uh, like I say, here's here's the way it really looks. Is 
start wide, you come in here, and then you, you pull down lightly. You're not putting any pressure on it, you're just getting a feel, right? And if you feel anything other than a flat edge as you, you, you exit the blade, then you will actually um, know there's a burr there, but never, never ever go this way because you'll cut yourself. It's there's especially fresh sharpened skates like a razor blade. But after I sharpen them, here's